Today's special guest is Terry from Thankfully So, and she's here to show us her technique of creating invisible scenes. So welcome, Terry. Thank you, Cindy. I'm glad to be here, and I appreciate you having me. Well, I'm glad you brought this quilt. It's beautiful, and I love how your seams are invisible. So you're going to tell us how to do that. Well, I needed a 56-inch piece for this strip right here. And as we all know, fabric only is 40 to 42 inches. So mm -hmm. I needed to create a, a length of an additional you know, 10, 12 inches. So I matched up the, the pattern print here on this strip of fabric to the pattern print here on this strip of fabric and then showed them together. And I have kind of a, a unique uh, way of doing that. A simple, very simple, easy, unique way of doing that. And so. it is invisible, which you don't want to see your seams in the quilting. Right. So. Right. So I'm excited for you to teach us how to do this. So okay. show us. First of all, when we get our yardage of fabric, each fabric has a repeat. Some of them can be an inch or some of them can be up to 15 inches. This one is about eight inches repeat. So we have a flower here and a flower here and a flower here and the little floral print here and here. So our repeat is about like this. And we're going to take the, a strip of fabric um, across the fabric. We're going to cut across. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to match it right here so that we can continue on that strip so that we can get whatever length we want, whether it be... It'll be seamless and look like one whole piece. Right. Okay. Right. Because there's different things we need whole pieces for. Right, yeah. So. We can use them on a larger quilt, a queen size or a king size quilt, if people choose to make that. Curtains. Or on mm -hmm, curtains, mm -hmm. valances, a baby crib, a little uh, ruffle on a baby crib so that you have that continuous piece and you don't have that interruption of fabric pieces. And if you've ever seen fabric printed, it's always it's screen printed and a lot of times the repeats are 24 inches, the screens, and so you can have a variation of 24 inches in each of the repeats. So our one in here is eight inches. About eight inches, about yeah. Eight inches. Okay. Yeah. Show us how My you bucket list is to see that screen printing one day. Well, I've seen it and it is fascinating. Yeah. So <laughs> it's so lightning speed and accurate. It's it's amazing. I'll bet that is interesting. I just wanted to show on this uh, sarsaparilla print the repeat on here. If you can see we have the P here and the P here, and then it goes on to the D and the S. And I think this is about 13 inches or 14 inches that is actually the repeat. However, on this fabric, you don't have to necessarily repeat the um, alphabet. You can just repeat the squares, the one inch square. So you take your fabric, and we'll show this in detail in a little bit, but you take your fabric and fold it right along that line of the square, and match it up to the squares here so that you can you just continue on with that um, and that's flawless. the line of the yeah. square and then it's flawless like this so it can be anywhere between an inch or 15 inches or like you said up to 24 inches so what I wanted to show you is the repeat on this is the other print or the other colorway of the Valencia pattern so we take the fabric here and you first start out and you want to decide, determine uh, if, you, if you need a 5 inch width or you need a 3 inch width or you need an 8 inch width, whatever you're using. And you cut your starting piece a little bit larger than that. Now I wanted to show on here that you can see that the leaves on this little flower are different. On each one of the uh, points it's and a little Lima bit different. always hand draws her artwork so that they are different. It's not done graphically. Okay. So. Yeah, she's, she's phenomenal. And so your print will only go one way. It won't, you can't do it both ways because of the way that she draws her pattern. <clears throat> so what I did is I took this other strip and I cut them down small enough for this demonstration. Otherwise you'd be having a 43 inch Right. Length. Yeah. So I took the print where I wanted to start and I just took a fold and I pressed it down. So um, turn it over and usually I start on the selvage side because you get a straight edge. It doesn't have to be that way but it just gives you a straight edge. So then we fold it over and we press that down really good and I'm a presser. I love to press and so I pressed it really good 
And now we'll come back over here and we'll match it up to this flower over here. Now I only need, let's say I only need a three and a half inch strip. Okay. And so I can come back over here and it can be anywhere positioned on your other strip as long as you have a width wide that you know you're going to have. And you usually cut it down. Right. Okay. So right here it, line, it will line up and we just kind of line it up and make sure that we're getting that lined up exactly and as it just sits there you can't even tell. So now what we do is we take it and we'll put it some uh, glue here and it needs to be the water soluble glue okay. and um, we have a, a glue stick here that's carried by Riley Blake mm -hmm. that yeah. can be purchased from Riley Blake and the nice thing about this is you can use as much or as little as you want because you can reposition it until you get it exactly how you want it and you don't need to worry about this additional fabric here because once we get it uh, put down we will then have um, go back and cut it to a quarter inch seam okay Okay, so actually, we're going to go this way with it. <laughs> Had that turned wrong. So, no, we're not. We're going to turn it this way. And that's one thing you have to know, to, you have to remember, is to get that Pay flower attention. going the same direction. So we have this same little leaf here and the same little leaf here. So you just want to pinpoint one thing that you've got. And I'm going to glue that, put some glue on that. And again, you can use as much or as little as you want because it's water soluble and it will come out. So then we come back over here and we match that up. And it takes a little bit to get it just where you want it. Make sure you fix the center dot and all those little petals. Mm -hmm. So we need this to come down a little bit here. So how does that look? That looks right on. Okay. So now, since it's glued down, we will take it and we will just flip it back over. And because that's glued down, it'll stay there. And then we just take it over to the machine and we do a stitch similar to a stitch in the ditch. This okay. is not really a stitch in the ditch, but it's very similar. So you want to sew right down the middle of that crease. You don't want to get on either side of it or you'll mess up that match. So you just take it over and you sew it All right. right down there. Let's try it. Okay. Okay, so we sewed our stitch in the ditch. Okay. Let's see how it turned out. Oh, that looks Look really that. good. Yeah. Completely matched up. So if you had two full lengths, you could just double your length. Mm -hmm. So you could have almost, I don't know, 84, 86 inches wide of fabric. Right, yeah. So that's great. And you can add a third one if you want to, if you needed to. So now what we do is we'll iron this. So I'll just take it over here to the iron. Okay, we've ironed that now. So we'll just flip this back over, and we're going to trim this to a quarter inch. So I'll get the ruler and the rotary cutter. And we'll just trim that off to a quarter of an inch. You just kind of line up your stitching seam. With your quarter inch line, and we'll just cut that off. Okay. So now, if you choose, you can either press it to one side, or you can open that seam and press it open. Okay. Okay. The next step, then, is to cut your width. Whatever width you've decided that you need it cut to. So we'll cut. I'm going to line up that center dot uh, from the flowers, just to kind of get a... Uh, an Which eyeball centered right and we'll cut a strip of fabric and we'll pull this back this way to go clear to the end and line up the ruler here so that you get it on the straight again or straight of the strip and again I see this a lot for borders this is a great idea mm -hmm. for borders and then we'll flip it over because I'm right-handed. <laughs> and let's say we'll do a six-inch uh, strip so that we get back to, and then we'll have a five and a half. Do you just center if you've got a medallion? Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of put that in the mm -hmm. center. And again, it's a little bit like fussy cutting too. Mm -hmm. So you can place the medallion wherever you want to put it. 
and then six inch here. And there you have your strip. And look at that. Invisible seams. I love this technique and you can really use it in your borders, and quilting, and you know, drapes, anything. Right. Yeah, it's just a fun technique. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you for having me, Cindy. I appreciate it. It's just